Hey what's going on everyone, Vasco here and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm here with a brand new video on the 2022 Formula 1 car that just leaked. So we have a full scale model that just leaked and I really want to talk about some of the tech changes that we can see once we look at the images. But firstly, if you're enjoying this kind of content, please don't forget to subscribe, it helps out the channel a lot. So now to the 2022 car. So in my screen right now, you can see on the left and the right side, the 2022 leaked Formula One car. So we have a side image here on the right and the front image here on the left. And straight away, you can notice a lot of different things. So the front wing is different and we have these things in front of the front wheels. Then we have this strange structure where the barge boards used to be. So right here, let me just select this. So right here, we have a strange structure and you can see that the rear wing has also changed a little bit. So let's go one by one and explain these changes to, so that you can understand better what's behind the 2022 aerodynamic philosophy. So one of the things that they really wanted to make for 2022 is that the cars generate most of the downforce from the underbody of the car and not from the top of the car with the wings just like the current regulations do. So that explains the first change, which is right here on the on the right image. Let me make this bigger. You can see that there are no barge boards. Uh, the barge board area is very different and is now uh, a shape that resembles like going up, then down and then up again in the diffuser, as you can see. And why is this? So this is a technology that was invented actually in the 70s by Colin Chapman, and it's called the Venturi Tunnels. Uh, Colin Chapman didn't invent the Venturi Tunnel, but he did apply it to Formula One for the first time. And what this is making is effectively uh, making the diffuser work a lot harder and producing a lot of more of downforce. What this allows the teams to do is that we have a big opening section around here, then we have a small section that resembles the current floors right here, and then we have the diffuser which expands the, uh, expands the air again. So. If you don't know how this works, whoops. If you don't know how this works, then once the air gets right here, it has a certain velocity. But once the air gets to this point, we have the same amount of air, but in a, in a smaller area. And what this makes is for the velocity to increase. I will leave the equation right on the screen right now. Um, but what this makes is that once, since the air can't compress because it, there's nothing to compress the air down there, since the area gets smaller, the air gets a higher velocity. And since the air has a higher velocity, what this will make is a low pressure area right here. And this is exactly what teams want, because if you have a low pressure area underneath the car, then we will create a lot of downforce right around here. And if you look at this point, it's actually about the middle of the car. So you are creating a lot of downforce in the center of the car, which is what teams want in order to make a stable car in the corners. So this is the objective of this. And another benefit of this is that since most of the non-force is being created below the car, and since the diffuser is really low on, uh, really low on the car as well, this will create very little dirty air for the, for the amount of downforce that uh, it generates. And one of the things about the diffuser is that it can generate downforce even if you are glued to another car. So this is the thing that will make these regulations so different from the current ones when it comes to overtaking. And this is the major point and this is where we'll see the, most, the major development area in, in the 2022 uh, regulation cars. And if you check around here in the front image, you can see that there is this structure which resembles the diffuser, which is the entrance to the Venturi tunnel. So right here in this example, we can see one, two, and three Venturi tunnels on each side. And I think that the teams will have the freedom to add as much as they want if they don't exceed the allowed fl floor width. Right in front of the entrance of the Venturi tunnels, we have this thing above and, and below the front wheel. And what is this? So you may have noticed that in this image, the front wing is now not allowed to have this area w with a cutout. So now the front wing needs to go right from the end plate up until the nose. So that uh, eliminates a lot of the freedom that teams had with things uh, such like the cape that they used to put around here and with things such as the Y250 vortex, which was a vortex that generated around here and that 
uh, guided the airflow in order to go to the barge board. So teams don't have that anymore. This is one of the things about these new regulations is that they really want to uh, eliminate the maximum number of vortices that they can because vortices are effectively what generates the, the dirty air that's uh, difficult overtaking. So right now we have a much simplified front wing, which again, uh, if you don't know, vortices are generated once a sharp tip, such as this one, uh, gets in contact with the air. And you can see that this front wing is very smooth and since it gets into contact with the nose right here, there's no sharp edges to generate vortices. And this makes the front wing uh, a lot less effective at generating downforce and guiding the airflow, but also makes the front wing generate a lot less of dirty air. But one of the things that the current front wings allow and that this style of end plates won't do, so let's switch to the side image again, uh, this style of end plates won't allow is to, gener is to control the tire wake. And what the tire wake is, is, let me switch to the front image again, the tire wake is the air that the tires move while they are spinning and teams used to control this with the front wing with and with a number of elements and if you look at the 2018 regulations actually there were a lot of elements right around this area which were there just to control the tire wake and try to push the air outwards and this also generates a lot of dirty air but since teams don't have this in the current reg in the 22 regulations they actually put this thing here and going below the front wing um, which will cut the airflow that the tire wants to generate. So it will allow teams to control the tire wake much better than the front wings ever could, but also whilst generating a lot less of drag, and a lot less of dirty air. So th that's what this is for. This is to control the front tire wake and also to kind of control the size of the front brake ducts, which you, as you can see are much, much smaller. And so now for the final part of these regulations that you can see on the screen right now, we have the, we have the rear wing. And if you look at the rear wing, you may notice a, a little bit of a strange thing. So if you look at the side, side image, you can see that in the current regulations, teams have end plates. And so these are the squares that you see right here. So above and below the rear wings and teams won't be allowed to use this, to use them anymore. And what they do is that they generate a lot of vortices and you know by now that vortices mean dirty air. So uh, the current end plates generate a lot of dirty air, but that's not their purpose. Their purpose is not to generate dirty air for the car that's behind them. Their purpose is actually to stop the wing air from above and below to mix. Imagine that this is a side profile of a rear wing. It's actually not like this, but you get the point. You have air traveling like very fast around here because it's a shorter distance. So if you can see from here to here is actually a shorter di distance than from here to here. So we create a lot of downforce like this, but you can imagine that when the air gets near the tip of the wing right here, it wants to get from above the wing where it's nice and fast to here where it's slow. And this was actually generate a lot of vortices and ma makes the air mix from above and below the wing. And this limits the potential for the wing to generate downforce. And this is what the end plates are looking to eliminate. Uh, they are looking for the air on top of the wing, not to mix with the air below. But on the process, this generates a lot of vortices for the car behind. And what you can see right here is that in these regulations, the wings are actually much more curved and they don't have the end plate, so the air will eventually mix from above and below. And as you can see with the front and rear wing, they have both been nerfed. So uh, the front and the rear wing will be able to generate a lot of less downforce than they currently are. And this is in a trade-off with a dirty air, so the cars will be slower, they will generate a lot of less downforce with the front and rear wing, but they will generate a lot of more downforce with the floor. It will be a lot of more effective with their aerodynamics and with their downforce. They will generate less drag because the simpler shapes of the front and rear wing will generate less drag and they will generate a lot of downforce with the floor, which is clean downforce. And what I mean by clean downforce is that it's an amount of downforce that won't um, 
generate dirty air for the car behind. So by doing this, Formula One is, eff is effectively changing the way in which they produce downforce. So going from above the car to below the car and cleaning a lot of the airflow structures. So the front and rear wing will now be used much more to balance the amount of downforce in the front and behind the car and not used as much to generate that big amount of downforce that they used to. And so those are the major changes that we can see from this leaked car and i know that the car looks a bit weird but that's just because it doesn't have wheels on it if it had wheels on it it would actually look a lot more like a formula one car and i must say that uh, now this is my opinion that this is a very good step for formula one because i really like the way that they are thinking about this they are thinking much more in the way that uh, the cars need to be more effective and that the cars need to be uh, more easy to follow and provide better racing instead of just being the fastest cars in the world just for the sake of it. They need to be fast, yes, and they will be, but they also need to race in order for the show to be good, in order for the sport to be good, and I think that these regulations are a very good step in, and in that direction. And I also am a big fan of the way that they are trying to make downforce generation smarter. So instead of having those huge front and rear wings, they are actually trying to use the technologies that have been uh, discovered through the ages of Formula One and in the 70s and generate the downforce below the car, which is much cleaner and much more effective and much more easy to create and to generate and to control. And I think that this is a major improvement over the current regulations. So let me know if I missed anything about the 2022 car. I hope you guys enjoyed this technical analysis of the leaked pictures. Again, these are this is only a car model. Teams will add a lot of extra detail to their cars once we see them. And once we see the cars roll out to the first race next year, they will be barely recognizable from this image. But especially once teams find loopholes and other things. But this is the arrow concept that Formula One is trying to create. So stop the teams from creating a lot of downforce with the front and rear wings and try to create the downforce with the diffuser here and try to control the outwash from the tires with these structures above and below the front wheel. So let me know what you thought of this technical analysis and if you want to see more videos like this explaining each element of the 22 regulations in more detail and let me know what you think of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you if you are liking the kind of content that I'm making, so the more technical minded videos and the opinion minded videos, well, then don't forget to subscribe because this is what this channel will be all about. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed the triple header. Bye.